So good afternoon, uh, Mr. Ambassador, and uh, thank you for the interview, sir. Uh, good afternoon, John. Thank you very yeah. much. Nice yes, to be here, yes. So uh, for the past uh, several days, seven uh, media uh, players, sir, uh, yeah. specifically journalists yeah. from Cambodia and Laos, yes. they were invited by the embassy of Indonesia in Cambodia to visit one of the most beautiful provinces in uh, Sumatra. Yes. Specifically speaking, is West Sumatra, sir. Yes. Um, Initially, so my first question to you is that why Cambodian media sir, and Laos media were chosen for this year's trip particularly? Yeah. Sir? I think um, there are a number of reasons of that. Um, in particular, it's because the embassy was very vocal um, and we, were, we told uh, the, our, our colleagues in Jakarta as well as our colleagues in Padang the need for there to be more exposure of Indonesia to the Cambodian people. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, um, after a lot of discussing with them, they've agreed to our suggestions that we invite Cambodian as well as Laotian um, um, journalists to come and visit uh, West Sumatra. Um, at the same time as well, why West Sumatra, you asked me that question just now. I think um, in, uh, a lot of Cambodians know about um, Indonesia from their uh, knowledge about Bali Island but they don't know anything else other than Bali Island. And I think it's very important for us to introduce Indonesia in a more comprehensive way. And yeah. one of the things is also to bring people to other parts of Indonesia, to Sumatra, uh, to West Sumatra in particular, which is very different from Bali, very different from the main island of Indonesia, which is Java. And so with that, hopefully we'll be able to introduce a more complete picture of Indonesia, yes. Yes, sir, but just to highlight a bit, you know, based on the uh, the culture and uh, yeah. the historical site of uh, Sumatra, sir. Yeah. So, in general, you know, the tropical terrain, yeah. it exists around Southeast Asia, yes. sir. So, do you think, like, for example, the place that I've been, you yeah. know, the Minangkabau people that yeah. I have met, do you think, uh, you know, the culture and the historical aspect of West Sumatra, sir, can be, let's say, a good selling point yeah. for the tourists from, uh, from, from different parts of Asian indeed, and, and Cambodia, sir. Indeed, indeed. Um, there, uh, in addition to, for example, the, the actual geographical um, um, outlook or the geographical conditions of the West Sumatra province and, for example, the areas around the Padang City, at, in, at the same time, there's also an various elements of culture that is appealing to a lot of people in this region, including the Cambodian people. Say, for example, the culture of the Malayu people or the Malay people, which is in existence in Malaysia or Singapore, but also is very strong in West Sumatra as well. Uh, that notion of the culture of the Malay people is also seen among some uh, ethnic groups here in Cambodia, for example, with the Cham people. Yes. So, of course, there's that connection. Uh, and, of course, that there's notion that uh, the food of the Padang people, the food of the Minangkabau people, the Minang people, is 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 can be taken quite easily by by the Cambodian people. So I think, in addition to the natural landscape of of that part of Indonesia, there is also an element of culture that can have connections with the with the people around the region, in particular people in Cambodia. So yeah. by visiting West Sumatra, perhaps Cambodian people can you know unite a bit more toward the historical. Uh, aspect between yes. the two nations. Yes, so. uh, in fact, um, there's there's an element of uh, history involving our, th these two parts. In particular, for example, the, the the province of West Sumatra was one of the places visited by um, King Father Sihanouk mm. um, when 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 um, when when he visited Indonesia. In addition to visiting Jakarta as well, he even wrote a song about Sumatra, Lihe Sumatra, yes, uh, which is a very uh, very uh, nostalgic song. Uh, sad song in that sense, but uh, it talks about the beauty of Sumatra and it talks about wanting to go back to Sumatra again. So, you know, there's, there's, there's that connection in the past, you know, during the old kingdoms and also a connection more recently in, 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 in history between our two countries, yes. Yes, sir. And uh, based on the, uh, the agreement sir, between the sister provinces, yeah. um, Phnom Penh and uh, Sumatra, sir, um, so far, in general, sir, how, how has the uh, Indonesian embassy in Cambodia, sir, uh, promote Indonesia to Cambodia and reciprocating leads yeah. from uh, Cambodia back to Indonesia, sir? There's a number of things. Of course, um, the letter of in, uh, the, the, the cooperation between West Sumatra and Phnom Penh 
was just established, um, I think it was last year, or is it 2021? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but very, very recently. So we are trying our best to work with both sides, both West Sumatra province as well as Phnom Penh, to see how this cooperation can be impl implemented concretely, whether it is in a form of exchanges uh, by um, youths or exchanges by, by, uh, by certain communities, like for example, the business communities or for example, sir, um, the leaders of, of, of certain parts of, 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 of the province. That's one of the things that we would like to be able to implement concretely together with the, with the leadership of, of the two provinces. But at the same time, uh, there is also uh, the intent for us to, to, to promote Indonesia as a whole. And over the years, the Embassy of Indonesia in Phnom Penh We've carried out a number of activities uh, related to promoting Indonesia. Um, you know, this is one of it. You know, the fam trip that yes, you yes, yes. participated in. But also, for example, earlier this year, in the month of, of September, we actually organized uh, a, a, a big trade fair, and it's not only on trade, but also on investment and tourism as well, and education as well. So we will be holding a similar activity next year, um, one big activity probably in the month of September related to promoting Indonesia, Definitely. but also we will also follow up with other smaller but, but very important events related to other fields of cooperation, be it education, youth cooperation, uh, business to business contacts and whatsoever. At the same time, of course, um, um, my embassy also tries to play a role of promoting Cambodia to the Indonesian people. Yes, and I've been trying to do that uh, using social media uh, mm -hmm. to show uh, the people back home in Indonesia that uh, Cambodia is a safe place, Cambodia is a friendly place, and, and Cambodians are very much like the Indonesian people and that, you know, um, and that the Cambodian people is very welcoming of not only tourists but also Indonesians who want to come here um, either to study or to, to work in Cambodia. So, so we're, 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 we're doing it both ways here, not only promoting Indonesia in, in Cambodia but also trying to promote some Cambodia. Uh, among the Indonesian public, still a long way to go, sir. No, but but it is it's good. In uh, Cambodia is quite well known, particularly because of the good job that you, but the Cambodian people and the Cambodian government uh, carried out during the chairmanship of ASEAN uh, last year. So Cambodia is uh, well known. It was right after the 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 COVID nineteen pandemic, and it was Cambodia who was the host, not only the host but also the chair of ASEAN, and how. Cambodia tried to lead ASEAN outside, um, to go out of the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. So I think it was a fantastic job that was carried out by the government as well as the people here. And so that's how Cambodia remains, um, remains, remains in the hearts and also the minds of the Indonesian people, not only historically, but also some of the more recent achievements carried out by the people of Cambodia. Yes, sir. So based on the previous uh, mentioning, sir, uh, because we share sometime a bit of a similar culture and history yeah. sir so do you feel like you know there's a hope you know for let's say cooperation you know in 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 the field of let's say archaeology sir or you know ethnology sir because uh, cambodia now we 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 tend to you know go into a bit to culture yes. so archaeology and ethnology they yes. are quite important yeah. uh, gradually more important yeah so you, do you think there will be uh, I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of potential for cooperation in the area, yes. particularly in sharing experiences on how, um, um, for example, how Indonesia is carrying out vis-a-vis -vis our development of those fields, archaeology or ethnology. Um, but at the same time, we recognize that these areas of cooperation needs a lot of funding, mm. and I think this is where we could partner up for cooperation with other sources of. Of, 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 of support, for example, be it countries either um, in Europe or country, for example, in East Asia, and see how our trilateral cooperation between Indonesia, Cambodia, and other countries could promote uh, better, um, better uh, studies yes, about sir. archaeology in Cambodia and Indonesia, better studies about ethnology in Cambodia and Indonesia, to see how we could look back in history and see that there are the similarities are not only in the color of our skin, but also in the fact that we have we share a number of similar traditions and, and cultural ties. Yeah, because as I uh, see, sir, because um, you know the Uncle Park and you know some of the temple in Java, Budu yeah. Budu, some yeah. they are very very. I mean, they used to be a civilization. Sir. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, in fact, actually, there is um, uh, a cooperation, a sister temple cooperation that has been developed between yes. Angkor Wat and also um, Borobudur. Um, the implementation needs to be 
uh, encourage, of course, but the platform or the framework for cooperation is already in existence mm -hmm. at the moment. And I think it's a matter of how we want to implement this particular cooperation in the future. Yeah. Yes, sir. Following, following to the next question, sir, um, just in general also, sir, do you think, you know, several years after COVID now, do you think people, let's say in Indonesia or in Cambodia, do, you, do they feel a bit more relaxed, you know, in, in terms of traveling to each other's countries? Sir? I think um, two, two, two elements need to be answered when, yes, when you ask that question. First, of course, with regard to the actual health conditions in, uh, in both countries. And I think if that was the question, then I think um, the level of comfort definitely is, has gone up, yes, you sir. know. Uh, the two of us, we're no longer wearing masks. And of, of course, when you travel to, to Padang, yeah, it seems no like masks. nobody was wearing masks <laughs> either. I think not, not, not because we are ignorant or we are careless, but I think the fact that we have reached a particular level of, of consciousness at the fact that that disease right now is somewhat being, have already been controlled by, by the conditions in both countries. So on that particular level, I think there is already a level of comfort for people to travel between yes, Indonesia sir. and Cambodia both ways. Now the second part of the question is with regards to how financially uh, comfortable they are. You know, because you know, uh, a lot of people in both countries suffered immensely economically uh, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, I think um, uh, in the last year or two, there is recovery happening in our, our economies. I know that the Cambodian economy is recovering right now. I think it's posing a, a, an economic growth of about 5.1% or so. Indonesia's economic growth is not as high as Cambodia, but we are posing some positive numbers in our economic growth. So I think uh, a lot of people are, uh, are recovering some of its economic losses. And I think with that recovery, um, they are more willing to spend um, yes, money and actually go abroad to, to, to do uh, tourism in other countries. At the same time as well, after being cooped up for so long, after yes, being told by the government, you can't go anywhere, you can only stay at your houses, I think you know, now is the time for people to say, oh, I want to go out. And of course, you know, you, if you want to go out but you don't have that much of a funds, you tend to want to go either within the country yes, or to neighboring countries. And of course, in this sense, I think um, Indonesians coming to Cambodia or Cambodians coming to Indonesia would be one of the most natural things for, for the, our two people to actually do. Just yeah. so with the opening of the new airport in Phnom Penh and Siem Reap, so do you think that is, you know, still like somewhat a catalyst, you know, to, to perhaps like make a direct flight between, let's say, Siem Reap Padang or, you know, yeah. Phnom Penh Padang? Do you see that as a catalyst? Sir? Of course. I yes, think um, when you're trying to develop tourist destinations, it's not only with regards to whether the destination is interesting or not, mm -hmm. but also the fact that it needs to be supported by good infrastructure. And airports is a must. Yes. Airports are a good investment for the future of your tourism destination development. So I think in a sense, yes, it will be a catalyst for further increase of tourism coming into Cambodia. Uh, it will provide more facilities, it will provide easiness, it will provide more sense of, of, of facilitation for tourists coming in, not only from, 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 from Indonesia, which usually uses small planes, yes. but you know, those coming from halfway across the world, which will have to come in larger planes now that they could actually come into, into Siem Reap a bit easily compared to in, in the past. So I think, you know, this will open up opportunities for Cambodia to, to invite more um, foreign tourists to come to, 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 to your country. Yes, sir, but a bit of an extra question, sir. Um, yes, sure. Do you, uh, you know, know any like a Cambodian diaspora living in Indonesia, sir? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. There, there's, there's not, there, there are some Cambodians living in Indonesia. I don't have the exact numbers. I will have to ask your, your ambassador in, in Jakarta. <laughs> but um, there are some Cambodians living in Indonesia, but they don't necessarily uh, live there as large communities in certain mm. places. There are professionals there. There are people working for international organizations. There are people, of course, working at your embassy and, and your other, um, 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 uh, what do you call it, institutions yes. that, that there may be. Um, but um, at the same time, um, I, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is no interest um, yes, um, by Cambodians uh, not to go to Indonesia. In fact, I think uh, right now, this year, um, um, up, up, up until the month of November, we are seeing about 9,300 Cambodians already visiting Indonesia. 
um, which means that by the end of the year, hopefully we'll be able to reach either 10,000 or even 11,000. Yes, uh, it's still a smaller number compared to the pre-COVID conditions, which is 19, uh, 13,000. But you know, as things progress, as the economy here gets better, and as people become more aware of, of other destinations in Indonesia except for Bali, you yes, know, I think uh, we'll, we'll probably be able to get to that number of 13,000 within a year or two again. So there's a lot of hope for, 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 for more interactions between Cambodians um, and Indonesians, yes. Yes, sir. so my last question to you, sir. Uh, there's uh, an agreement between the Cambodian government and the Indonesian government in terms of the uh, rice importation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So do you think, uh, let's say specifically to the trip, of course, do you think West Sumatra will you know, import rice from Cambodia also? So because when I was there, they also make a lot of rice, sir. So <laughs> Uh, um, Indonesia is a country of a population of 270 million people. Yes, sir. There is always a need for rice. <laughs> for a country that loves rice that much, somehow um, Indonesia, for s there will be certain periods where Indonesia will be self-sufficient in rice, but you know, depending on weather, depending on uh, the conditions every year, there will always be an extra need for rice because you, the population is always growing. So in that sense, I think um, um, I don't, uh, well, there is already importation of rice coming into Indonesia. I think the, the most recent arrival was just um, a week ago um, to, to, to a port in, in, in on Java Island. But I think you know, there is interest in imports for rice from various parts of the world. And knowing that Cambodia is one of the best rice producing countries, not only quantity, but also taste-wise, and I've lived there only for two months and I enjoy the rice here <laughs> very yes, much. Sir. So I think, you know, in that sense, I think um, it will be sooner or later there will, there will be Cambodian rice arriving in, 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 the, in the very popular Padang restaurants in, in the West Sumatra. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and so you know what? The combination of Cambodian rice and Padang food is fantastic. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I know it because my, 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 my wife uh, makes some yes. Padang food here and she combines it with uh, white rice from Cambodia and it, it, it's a perfect match. So gastronomy, <laughs> so gastronomy can be a new aspect. Yeah, between, yeah between definitely. Uh, it, it's, always, yeah. it's always a good aspect yes. in cooperation between uh, the two peoples. Yeah. Yes, sir. So thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Oh, thank you very you. much. Thanks, yes, thanks for being I here. I wish I can go to Indonesia again very soon. Sir. Oh, hopefully, you, yes, sir. hopefully there's an opportunity for you to visit other parts of Indonesia. Yes, sir. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, Keep Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, thank you, thank yes. you.